In Creole Parametric, you can make assemblies inseparable. That is, you can embed all the different components for that assembly in the assembly file. In that way, you won't have individual files for the parts and subassemblies to manage and track separately. This is especially convenient for purchased items. For example, you might have a vendor who provides a step file or an IGES file or even a native model file, which is a complex assembly with a whole bunch of different parts. PTC has a recommended workflow and you can find this inside of PTC's Help Center. Let's take a look at that workflow. Here I am in Creo Parametric. Step one, we are going to open the top level assembly or target assembly. And if you're using Windchill or some kind of data management system, you will check it out of Windchill. Step two, we are going to open up that purchased assembly. In this situation, I'm going to click the open button and then I'll change the type from the default Creo files and I'll change it to all files so I can locate a step file that I have received from my vendor. I will click on the import button and then we get the import new model dialog box. I'm going to bring this in as an assembly. I'm going to use my templates and my step profile. I'm not going to generate a log file. And here's the file name that it will use. I am fine with that. Now I will click the OK button. It will begin the process of importing that model. Let's give it a few seconds. All right, it is now imported. Let me reduce my clutter by turning off my coordinate systems. And so this is a motor from T Motors. It represents an F40 motor. I don't think they provided this file. I think someone made this file and put it online. And if we take a look at the model tree, we can see that we have our imported assembly here, and then we've got a part at the top level of that assembly, and then we've got sub-assemblies and other different components. If I want to check how many components are in this assembly, we can use model check. I'll go to file, prepare, and let's use model check. Model check interactive should give me the information. I'll choose top level. And now we have the report. I'm going to expand the information. Uh, let me scroll down over on the side to find the particular line that I am interested in. So I see bill of materials is 93, parts and subassemblies is 92, and there are 48 unique parts and subassemblies. So do I really want to manage all those individual files inside of Windchill when I'm getting this from a vendor? Probably not. Let's close the model check report. I'm gonna close this warning about, hey, it's been modeled, modified by model check. Please save it before exiting Creo. Let me scroll back up to the top. The next step that we want to do is we want to make this assembly inseparable. To do that, we can right click on the top node in the model tree. Here we have inseparable assemblies and I will choose make inseparable. We get a warning about the modeling impact and MBD. I will click the OK button and it collapses the model tree. You can see that we have a different symbol for the subassembly and the individual component parts and subassemblies below that level. So this is good. Let's hit the save button and I will save it in my current folder. Let's click the OK button and the assembly has been saved. By the way, if I go to my folder browser and my working directory, you can see that we have only one file for that assembly. That's the whole point of making it inseparable and embedding all the different components. Let me close my navigator. Now I can even close this window. I don't need it anymore. Let me turn my coordinate system visibility back on. So now in the next step, I'm going to assemble the inseparable assembly into this file. Let me choose the assemble button and I will grab that inseparable assembly. Let's choose open and let's see where it is. It's somewhere over here. Oh my goodness, all those coordinate systems in there. Let me cheat and use the model tree. I'm gonna use the default coordinate system of the imported assembly and one of my coordinate systems. Let me turn off 
that coordinate system display in order to reduce the clutter. So this is good for locating the first motor. And I had a bunch of pattern coordinate systems. So now I can select that imported component and then pattern it. And it's going to reference pattern it. Let me hit the check mark. And so now I've got eight instances of that motor located inside of my assembly. And again, if we expand in here, we can see that these are embedded components in the inseparable assembly. So now that I've got my assembly done, well then in the next step, if I need to, I could create data sharing features in this top level assembly that reference the inseparable assembly or inseparable assemblies. In the next step, let's simulate creating a drawing for this. So I will choose File, New, and then let's change to Drawing. I will use not the default template. Let me use the Drawing Model file name. And let me use, I always do a template, or excuse me, empty with format. Let me grab my standard template and click the OK button. And let's use Sheet 1, and then there's a bunch of parameters that I want to fill in. Let's just bypass that and hit the Enter key. Okay, so now I have my drawing started out. Let me throw in a drawing view, a general view. Let me use no combined state. And then let's throw in the general view. Let me just throw it right in here. And, oh, there we go. Let me use the save view like top. Top should work. Let's try that. Okay, just the top view of it. And I will click the OK button. Let's make it a little bigger. I'm going to change the sheet scale. Double click on the value and make it a value of 0.25. Okay, just so that if we zoom in, you could see the top view of the motors that are being displayed as part of the assembly. So now we could bring in a bill of materials. So let me go to the table tab and let's go to the, let's see, which one do we want? Table, oh, somewhere in here. Table, quick tables, that's what I am looking for. And so let me look for a bomb description down and then bring it over. And so here we have the line for the F40 motor and the quantity is eight. And so that way it is showing just the inseparable assembly. It's not showing all the individual components, but if you needed to show the embedded models in the bill of materials, you could go to repeat region and then attributes and then select the repeat region. And right now it's set to no embedded, which is what you probably want you could choose include embedded, and then it would show all the lines for those, what was it, like 48 unique components, 92 individual components at all those different levels. But I don't want to do that. And so now that I am done, I've got my drawing, I could continue populating my assembly if I wanted to. But then in the final step of the recommended process, well, we could save our assembly and we could check in these modified versions of the assemblies and drawings to windshield. So there you have it. That is a recommended workflow from PTC regarding handling your new purchased items as inseparable assemblies and embedded components.